Russian banter with Tony Smith. Rise Razor, and welcome back to the studio. And we're joined in the studio with a none other than, this is a busy lady, friends, a <laughs> very busy lady here, none other than Diane Boyd, manager of a rock band and, and, in charge of her own regeneration, RE3. Now, Deborah, it's getting hot in the studio, isn't it, Pat? It is getting hot in the studio. It's that time of the day, there it goes, <laughs> look at that there, yo-ho. Uh, so what about you? Well, I'm doing fine. It's nice to be back in with you oh, again. It's lovely to come back in. And I love the nails, by the way. Thank you very much. I, I got those specially done for you. I would, wouldn't like to get the wrong side of them nails, I can tell you. <laughs> Talk about tearing slips of them on. Uh, so, a big shout out to the antidepressants. Big razor for razor. the antidepressants. They're great crack. And they uh, are. I met, you said, I met them, some of the, I met the girls, Karen and Susie, down at the Blues Fest in Warren Point. And uh, great crack as usual, you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. They're a buzz, aren't they? They are great. I love they're having buzz. them out front in the band as well as the backing singers. Normally they're stuck away in at the back, but those girls get out and get the whole place rocking. So. They're like... They're like front men for backing singers. Yes, if, they are. If you like that term, yeah, that's a good uh, term. You know, front men for backing singers. But they, they're, they're excellent, aren't they? They're brilliant. Yeah. And the crack's always good. They're always smiling. The fun's always there, you know. Well, look, that's what the band's about. It's about having a bit of fun, a bit of crack, and being able to get up and dance your legs off all night. And that's, that's the way, one. way I look after them. That's and the one. Get on with it. But that's my, that's my fun job. That's your fun job. That's yes. your, your hobby. That's my hobby. <laughs> That's R and R, rest and relaxation. Oh, so you're a rocker. You're a rocker. <laughs> Deep down at heart, you're a rocker, Deborah. I Boyd. am indeed. Good, good, good. Uh, a big shout out to the campaign for Shanine. And I'm wearing my band here, and it's sterling work that they're doing out there. And I wish you all the best of luck and love out to the Smith family there in Blake. So I had to right. give Shanine a wee shout there. Indeed, you, know. you do. Great so, cause. Tell us about then RE3 now. Tell us about this recycling plan that you have or plant that you have. Yep. Um, well, a number of years ago, I've always been involved in the recycling business. I was in the scrap metal business with oh. a company called Clearway. Big Northern oh, Ireland Clearway company. Clearway and Pour Down. Clearway and Pour Down I started out with in 1982. My God. And that's where I first started to get my love for recycling and the environment and the opportunities, the business opportunities that there were in recycling materials. So uh, I was with Clearway for about 10 years, um, wow. set up the Porta Down Depot, set up the Belfast one and was involved in the acquisition of the sites that they have in Dublin, Cork and Athlone. And Would Clearway uh, are now the biggest scrap metal company on the island of Ireland. Is and that right? That's where I got my, my teaching. In, I didn't go to a, a university, you know, to learn about recycling. Oh, see. I went to the coal face. You're hands on. Hands on. And then a number of years later, the University of Ulster honoured me with a visiting professorship. So you're talking to a professor. <laughs> Environmental entrepreneur, professor <laughs> of recycling. Yes. Well, it, can, you, can you let me shake that hand and, and no, give it a kiss? Uh, oh, indeed, do. My goodness. And them, they, wow, look at them beauties there. <laughs> That's serious. But so, right, I love, tell me more. I love the environment. I believe that if we don't, we have a right to, and a duty to protect the environment for our children and our children's children. And Clearway was a great example of how, if you put the right business methodology into it, you could create a vibrant business which is export, 95% export based, all the metals are going off the island. Uh, 150 jobs in there whenever I left. Hey, when I joined them, I was only the 13th. So, lucky, lucky for them. I mean, Clearway are as fine an example of a, uh, a recycling company as I could ever show you. And after I left them, I, I was looking for something. Do you know that wouldn't be incineration? I, I don't like incineration. I've it always puts been the on it. It's smoke. What uh, worries me about it the is chemicals. the chemicals that go up into the air. In the east coast of Ireland, we have an awful high cancer rate. And Indeed. I always felt that incineration, or as some people like to call it, waste of energy. Well, I think that's coming from Sellafield, all that. I mean, it, so the way, it the contamination the air, that we're getting. It blows across the RSC, it Absolutely. comes down as rain, cows eat the grass, yeah. we drink the milk, we drink the water. It's so a big circle. It's a vicious circle, a very vicious one. So what drove me was, I wanted to find something that wasn't incineration. We didn't have to burn it, and we didn't have to risk putting all the carcinogenic or car cancer right. causing things into the atmosphere yeah. you yeah. know yeah. so i was <coughs> part of a business delegation i was very proud to be part of this particular one that went to the white house 
in America. Would you quit? I'm telling you this. I'm getting more, I'm learning more about this lady than I thought I knew a bit about. <laughs> oh, I haven't. So you professor, now you're going to the White House. Went out to the White House as part of the peace process, out to the initial talks. Do you know we're well into the peace process now? Yeah. But I was there in 96, 97 in Pittsburgh and I met a guy uh, from the US Department of Commerce. And he says to me, uh, you're the woman in garbage, right? Because of course they call it garbage. <laughs> yeah. And I says, well, I am. I says, I yeah. believe in making the most out of it and treating it as a resource. So that's where I got my company name from. We treat waste as a resource which you can recycle and recover. And that's the three key buzzwords. In RE3. RE3. Like that's it. where the company come from. I like it. And if any of your viewers want to see exactly what we do, they can always take a look at our website, which is www.re, the number three, the word group, re3group.com. And you'll see there the machinery that, uh, that it took me 15 years from 1996 wow. to the end of the 2000s to build a commercial scale. That's right. incredible because I was looking at the website. I have to say, friends, take a look because I, I couldn't believe it. I mm. couldn't believe what, what you could do with what was normally in waste. The bin. What goes to landfill. Or landfill or goes to incineration. Yeah. What you guys can do with it is astonishing. Recycle to and say recover the least. 95 to 100 percent of it, and there's no other technology on the planet that'll do that. And all the plastics and everything else. We recycle, we take out <laughs> the plastics. We're using, it's an old technology. Um, actually, autoclaving it's called, but for the viewers at home that might know these technical things, if yeah. you ever go into the hospital and you're being operated on, the sterilisation process that they use for the operating theatres is an autoclave. It's an autoclave, yeah. So I just took that design but made it bigger. And uh, about five years ago, I built the prototype plant of commercial scale in Limerick, in Ireland, in partnership with a waste company. Oh. And we got the thing built, we got it up and running, we put the... It never been done before in this scale. In Ireland? In a, anywhere in Any the world in this scale. This is incredible. <coughs> anywhere in the world wow. in this scale. And I believed in it so much that I went, I raised money out of New York, I raised money in Ireland, I raised money all over. And we built the plant and we proved it worked. And that's the plant that you can see on the website that was physically working in Limerick. Now, it was only there for three years because we couldn't turn it into a commercial plant uh, down in the site it was on and we needed an alternative location to run it commercially. Was the site too small? Too small for what we needed. Because and you, there's a lot of lorries coming in there, isn't it? A lot of lorries. And I mean, that plant that you see on my site, that yeah. replace a landfill site. That single plant will replace a landfill site and there will be no residue to deal with, there'll be no 25 year legacy, there'll be no nothing. No, no uh, pollution going down into the water table no. that's in already underground? No pollution at all because I can take an empty factory unit, put the thing in there and when we finish 15 years time with a piece of equipment, more than likely it'll be replaced but you could just walk away from the site and there's nothing but a concrete plinth left My of where goodness. I've been. That's incredible. And that was the reason why I researched uh, the, the guy that I met in the White House. He said to me, have you ever seen steaming garbage? Now, I don't know if you've ever left anything in the bottom of your bin long enough or left a pile sitting anywhere long enough. Well, left it in somebody else's bin, the next door neighbour's bin got it. You know, you're Aye. only joking. Like. But then it starts steaming yeah. because it starts to Break, degrade and break down. down. And Same as compost heaps and exactly. stuff. Exactly. Yeah. The heat started to build yeah. up. And so I thought he was talking about steaming garbage. And I says to him, not only have I seen it steaming, I've smelt of steaming <laughs> and I says, uh, you know, that's, that's why we need to deal with it because we're only moving the problem on to a hole in the ground and for future generations the and way we cover, deal with it. And then cover it. And then cover it and, and think there's nothing going on Yeah, there. when that compacts all these different uh, poisons, gases and Absolutely. all the rest. Absolutely, yeah. and there's leachate as you know, which is the, the, the hazardous liquid that yeah. forms from the rain falling on the ground, falling through all these substances that's it. and Filtering down into through. the ground. And that's going into Complete your water table. Complete poison. Complete Absolutely. poison, yep. So the long and the short of it was, this guy says to me, I've heard about some research going on in the University of Alabama. And I says to him, you wouldn't put me in touch with the guys. So when I flew out a year later to Pittsburgh to the next peace conference, the US Department of Commerce arranged for me to meet the guys who were doing the testing. I had a look at it and I thought, this might work for Ireland. So I came back 
arranged to go out and meet them where they were bringing their prototype from yeah. the university onto a landfill site uh, in Kentucky. And so my next flight was out to Cincinnati, across the old, the Ohio. The Ohio. And, you know, we all sang about that years the ago. The old big time, yeah. So we crossed the Ohio River and into Kentucky, and I went down to have a look at this prototype. Now, being a smart Northern Irish woman, I oh, thought... Oh, Professor. Northern Ireland garbage is different to American garbage. Because you've got to remember, they've got sink things that take their food and puts it under the drainage. They don't have open fires. They have the, half the, the recycled stuff that we have in our bins, they don't have. So I was thinking to myself, this is not worth going out to look at, really, yeah. because they're testing American garbage. So Debbie had a smart idea. Debbie, the smart idea, friends. Check. Here, Debbie, uh, would the U.S. <laughs> Department of Commerce please look away at this point? Yeah, could you just uh, look, away look away? Because I'm going to tell you what I did. I went and got my grey landfill bin from out the back, and I went and got those. Do you know them things that you vacuum pack your duvet when you're putting it up into the or, or your clothes? The vacuum, the vacuum pack ones. Bags, yeah, the vacuum I bags. I went and got a handful of them, and I went out and I got my garbage out of my bin at home. And I put it into the vacuum pack bags and I sealed them and I sucked the air out of them and I put them into two suitcases. And then I took a handbag for luggage and I put the odd two suitcases in the hold of the aircraft when I was flying to Cincinnati. And then I got to the landfill site where they were doing the testing and they showed me the American garbage going on and I said to them, that's fabulous, look at what that does. And then this, they uttered the immortal words. I says, I don't think this would work on Northern Ireland garbage, you know. And they said, if only we had some. To which point I says to them, pop the trunk, you boy. Smart cookie. Smart cookie alert here. And I videoed <laughs> my Northern Ireland garbage going up this thing and into this wee test machine. Right. And I videoed it coming out again. And by God, if it didn't work. And I was totally convinced at that point. Now, it was only a wee baby, like the size of yeah. a, a one-ton machine. So it was about the size of a, an oversized uh, spin dryer. Like a cement mixer. Like a cement yeah. mixer body, yeah. that sort of thing. But I knew to commercialise it, you'd have to go much bigger. In the waste business, you need to be able to handle tonnage. You need big stuff. So I come back and I was researching how I was going to go about it. In Northern Ireland, the landfill prices were so low you couldn't compete. So for five years, I took up a position. The Minister of the Environment for Northern Ireland asked me to chair the Waste Management Advisory Board for Northern Ireland. And that, do you know what it was like? It was like the United Nations of Waste, right? <laughs> That's Ima incredible. Imagine <coughs> Henry Kissinger being asked to go in and sit down with every side from the conflict. <laughs> well, I was asked to go in and sit down with the Department of the Environment, the local authorities, the chief executives, SOLAS, the local authorities uh, team, uh, Friends of the Earth, Northern Ireland Environmental Link, the industry, Greenpeace, the waste industry, the Greenpeace, the whole 14 the whole of them spectrum. had. 14 of them 14. had on the board. And we were charged with independently, independently being the key word, uh, oversee the Northern Ireland Waste Strategy, which I'd helped to write, and how it was introduced in Northern Ireland. And I spent five years on that board doing my civic duty. And um, at the end of it, we wrote a report. And that report said, and I'll paraphrase it because it was about that thick. Oh. But the long and the short of it was, Department of the Environment, you are not fit for purpose. You should, A, set up an independent environment agency, which would be independent of you and of the councils. So we wouldn't have poachers and gamekeepers uh, in the you. same office. I uh, get you, yes. We said that the law should be left to the Department of the Environment, as in the, the, the Minister and the Environmental Department should do that. But all licensing, enforcement, all action to, uh, on new investment should be done by an independent environment agency. Unfortunately, Razor, as you would probably know, in Northern Ireland they're not awful keen to take the advice of independent people that they set up. Oh, they'll pay plenty of money for consultation fee. Don't worry about that, but not they'll not to listen. Me. Not to me as no, chair of the board, but no, the other people. But they will pay out the consultants, and right. you know, but, and they won't listen. Absolutely. What, why or what? So, 
Go so, on, the professor, you t take over here now. Right? We want to hear so this. So the long and the short of it is, after a couple of years, I got fed up with it, and that's why I went south. <laughs> I went south and set the thing up down there because I felt there wasn't a structured way forward here in Northern Ireland. There was 26 councils, there was three groups looking at waste for the 26 councils. You'd be aware in the Newry region of something called Swamp, which is the Southern Waste Management Partnership. Yeah. It no longer exists. They're now trying... They're swamped. To, they're swamped with swamp. So um, I went out of the country and did this project whilst they were trying to find their feet. But in the meantime, didn't the Department of the Environment rename the, the Northern swamp. Ireland Environment Agency? So instead of being Environment and Heritage Service, which is what they were, they became the Northern Ireland Environment Agency. Agency, yeah. Right? yeah. Now I don't <clears throat> know about you, but changes in names don't necessarily mean changes in protocols, people, or the way they do business. And I have found that that has been the case, although recently they've got a new chief executive and he seems to be more dynamic in terms of setting a high standard Good. for sites and for facilities. But, cut a long story short, they named it the NAEA, and as I say, you can put lipstick on a pig, but it'll still be a pig. That's true, that's true. And you don't try that at home, friends. No, no, don't try that no home. lipstick on pigs at home. You no, know, not unless you're a makeup artist in a pig <laughs> farm. Work away, you know. But the, the whole point is that in order to create the investment, like that plant yeah. of mine's £15 million pound a shot, to get that To get that plant up and running. Yes. To get that plant up and running was £15 million. And if you want investment like that, you need to be in a, in a location where you've got the support of the government, you've got support of the investment agency, and you've got all that. And the public. And the public. Most of all the public. If you haven't got the public support, you're finished. Absolutely. And that's what I found whenever I was uh, down south. The easiest thing I had around me was the public. Because I could open my door or point them at the website and say, take a look at it, you'll see what we do. And everything that would rot in the ground and would create that problem in a landfill is mana to my machine. Because my machine loves it. It turns it into cellulose fibre. That's the fibre that you see at the end that looks a bit like compost. Yeah. But it's very different because it's twice the heat out of that, if you burn it, of wood or peat. It's twice the heat. It's unreal. In terms of when you put it in your boiler at home, if you had a wood pellet boiler, yes. you'd need half the amount of my stuff. Because it actually looks wood. like wood pellets, Deborah, doesn't it? It does. It can be made yeah. into a pellet. It and it's, it's non-toxic and all because totally non because of the autoclave process. Yeah, the autoclave process. This is unreal. Basically, if you look at the website, you'll see it. But to explain it in short terms, what comes out of the back of a bin lorry is put straight into the autoclave. It's cooked, for want of a better word. It's yes. the same as the uh, the pressure cooker your mommy might have used on the top yeah. of the stove. Yeah. It's the same thing, except mine's a big one. It's a big giant right? one. Right, and in it goes, and in two hours. The amount of waste reduces by 80%. 80%? That's incredible. Now, it's still the same weight, but it's 80% less. So and it's for, cleaner. And it's clean and sterile. It's clean. This is the deal, isn't because it? Because it's, it's cooked, or the temperature it's processed at, is 160 degrees. Now, when they do the operating on you in the theatre, they only clean the equipment to 140 degrees. I don't want them to operate me in the hospital. There's Definitely nothing wrong with me at the minute. No, <laughs> but that's, ahead, that's what yeah. I'm saying to you. For this members is very of the public, it, it, it is a process which is not incineration. It allows complete recycling and recovery. There's a market for everything I take out because it's like ordinary recycling. You get your plastic, there's a market for that. The higher the oil price, the higher the plastic, plastic price. Yeah. Aluminium cans. The old dog food cans, bean cans, all come out clean. If there was beans in the can that went in there, that's now cellulose fibre. That's so, incredible. Uh, I get an average. Now, what we learned from doing waste in, from Dublin and Limerick, and we're very similar up here, uh, I can recycle and recover 97% of the material, and the other 3% needs to go to a cement works, because that can be used. That's glass and stone, and that can be used <laughs> in a recycled uh, block, breeze block. Well, there you go. Northern Ireland Assembly, up at Stormont. Check out what this lady's saying. Dublin government, check out what you're saying. I mean, you had more success in, in, in the south of Ireland than what you had in the north. The north is ridiculous for bickering, useless, stupid bickering that goes back history-wise. Yeah. Well, look, let's move on. Put all that beside yeah. us. Because it's the environment. 
You know, you're, in, as I said, an environmental entrepreneur. You know what you're talking about. Yeah, I've spent and now spent 30 of, years. And, and, and this business. 30 you've years. Been, you've been to America so many times. So you know, so what, you know, we need to get this off the ground and to save our environment, really. Well, I'm working on some projects at the minute. Um, I'm looking at bringing an autoclave project to Northern Ireland and I'm, I'm talking to the relevant uh, agencies and government departments, etc. But I'm so tired of seeing applications for incinerators being turned down and energy from waste plants and when they go to it, it's another name for an incinerator getting turned down. What we need is a solution that is sustainable, that is involving job creation. Like one of my plants operating 24-7 and it'll employ between 50 and 70 people full-time. Full-time? Full-time. And sorry, sorry, you, that needs to run 24-7. Yeah, you run it 24-7 because it's generating electricity on the back heat. end as well. And, and, and it's, you know, you need it's the a heat. heat process, it's a heat so you're, you keep it running. That has to keep going yeah. all the time. And uh, could... With the pellets that come out, yep. could the pellets use, be used for heating the plant? Yes, that's exactly what I'm planning to do. We couldn't do it with the first one. Wow. We had to use fossil fuel boilers that ran on oil or gas. Because when we started this plant in Limerick, we didn't know if we'd produce fibre. We thought we would, but we didn't know if we would or not. So when we put all this investment in there, we couldn't put a combined heat and power plant, which is what you're talking yeah, about, yeah. in up front. It's the same thing that heats the swimming pool and that the local authority. Or it's just a big boiler. It's just a big boiler. Big boiler. But we can run it on that cellulose fibre, and that fibre can produce one plant with two autoclaves, exactly what you see on the website, will take in 150,000 tonnes of municipal or commercial or food waste, anything that's non-hazardous. It'll process that in one year, and coming out of it, if we use the fibre that's produced from that tonnage, um, we will have about 10 megawatts an hour of renewable electricity well, being able to upload onto the grid. So we could cut fracking out, we could cut everything out by using our own garbage to fuel the renewable energy of the future in Northern Ireland. Now that makes a lot of sense. That makes it so you know to stop the fracking. I know the fracking's very controversial at the moment. Absolutely. And as an environmental uh, entrepreneur, you just you're not you don't like this fracking at all. No, I've seen <coughs> what it's done in America. I yeah. mean, I followed uh, a lot of the alternative energy methods because I was looking to see where it was going and where yeah. my fuel might fit in it. And I looked at Pittsburgh, uh, Philadelphia in particular. Um, I've looked at where 1,200 sites were established in one jurisdiction and as each one of them ran out of the gas that was coming, each one of them was an individual private company. So once they shut the thing down, there was nothing to sue. There was nowhere to go to clean up the landscape. And I'm not joking, you, viewers, if you want to have a look, there's a no fracking website in Northern Ireland which you can go look at and you will see that documentary. Um, that's on there in, in relation to what fracking can do. And I have to say, we live on an island. A small Who little wants island. To drill a hole <laughs> in an island and put chemicals into it. Pump it down in. It's not a good terrible. idea. It's I, don't a think terrible it's a, I idea. really don't think it's a good idea. It's a terrible you know? idea. And our politicians are gas grasping at straws because they don't know how they're going to meet their renewable commitments by 2020. Yeah. And now fracking has come in, they think this is a short-term fix, but let me tell you, it's a long-term death sentence yeah. for the part of the island that they do it on. And for once, we are united in our objection to it, because nobody wants it in the south, and nobody wants it in the north. There you go. And you've got the alternative. You yep. have the alternative, which is clean, safe, and makes a lot of sense, Absolutely. let's face it. It makes a lot of sense. And I've you spent know. a lot of my life doing it too, because I believed that... We had great history here of engineering, Harland and Wolf, Mackey's, all the big engineering. Harry Ferguson. Harry yeah. Ferguson with the linen and all and the tractors, the tractors Ferguson and, and, yeah, the and all the rest. You know, we had great industries here. We don't have a lot of great industries here in engineering, but what we have is great knowledge and skill and education. And a plant like this, now you have to remember this technology is owned by Ray 3 Worldwide as well. So this technology, if you wanted it in Uzbekistan, you'd have to come and talk to Ray 3 um, or in, in anywhere else in the world. So 
this technology can go in, can demonstrate what it can do, and then we can sell it to the world out of Northern Ireland. What better way to get inward investment in here? There you go. It's sitting on our doorstep, friends. Deborah has the answer. She can create employment. She can environmentally clean up the whole place. In fact, we can you know, go to landfills. And take, the, and landfill. take the landfill out of them in the future if they get too much for the landfill owners to run. There you go. Because I've seen landfill and what they do is they fill the land but then they drive down big pipes to vent it. Yeah. And sometimes there is very dangerous fumes comes out of these pipes yeah. and the smell. Methane. And it actually goes, it comes out of the top of the pipe and then travels along the ground. Yeah, because it's heavier than It's air. heavier, so it goes down, no, it goes downhill all the time. Yeah, and that's why you get you a know, smell of rotten eggs. Rotten eggs. That's, that's basically methane. And it's explosive. Yes, it is. So you need to be very careful. And so the answer out of RE3 group, you guys know how to sort out rubbish. Yep. Proper rubbish. Yep. Make it smaller, compact it into pellet sized, and it could be used for it, anything. Could run Kilroot Power Station on it. My goodness. I could replace all the, all the renewable ener uh, fuel that, you may not know this, but Kilroot Power Station actually import olive pips by the boatload from Italy. Olive pips? Olive pips. Do you know whenever you get your olive yeah. oil in a bottle? Well, oh some, aye. Somewhere there's an olive that's well, been squished. I, I would eat the odd olive. Aye, you know, I like me olives. You know, and you pull it. So the pips The are pips out of the olive oil production. That is the renewable fuel that's currently being used along with coal and kill route. And oh God. Uh, our fuel could replace that. It wouldn't have to be shipped in from outside and it would reduce the sulphur and the nitrogen emissions from the coal itself for our portion by 90%. Well, um, it's not clean. This is unbelievable. And as I say, friends, check out the website, re3group.com. That's it. Check it out. Have a look at the videos because... We talked about this a while back. We did. And you, you give me the, the website, and I, I went home, and you're probably thinking, that Baldy Gid's not even going to watch it. <laughs> I did. I went and I had a look, because yeah. I, I, I do, I'm, I'm a carer for the environment, and a carer for my children, and, and you know... And the future. When, yep. when we pass away on, yeah. you, like, you would like to leave something pleasant, you know, for, yeah. for, you know, give them a chance. Well, this is International Environment Day, World Environment Day today. And That's I can amazing. Tell you, it's in Northern Ireland, we have an opportunity to demonstrate best practice, best technology, and reutilize old sites around Northern Ireland. There you go. Um, that can be, uh, can be utilized for this. And you know the great thing about it, Razor? I've never seen anybody stick a flag in garbage. So I reckon I could get all the politicians on my side if they'd all listen. So I have there a story to tell you, politicians. You want to talk to me? And I'm, I'm you do. here. You really do. do look, it's a, as you say, right, we've, right, there's a big silly thing in this country. Oh, north and south. That's a yep. load of rubbish. That you can autoclave. That I can autoclave. You can clean all this up. <laughs> razor. Deborah. Razor, baby. Razor. <laughs> I can tell you, you could clean up all the politicians in this country. Uh -huh. Autoclave the whole lot of them. <laughs> Put them out in pallets and let us run our own country. You know, I'd say we could have a, a much better time and a much better country. Yeah. But having said that, that you, you have got a solution. Yes. You've got the answer to a very, very serious worldwide problem yeah. that's creating nothing but trouble and hassle all over the world, diseases mm -hmm. and all that. And you can put an autoclave plant in, an RE3 group plant in anywhere in the world. Yep. And that can essentially run itself. Yeah. Well, with the operatives. Yeah, of course, with the, but that, it's, it's this, a computer controlled operating system. This is unbelievable. There isn't a human hand touches the waste from it comes out of the lorry until it falls off the back of the equipment. And if you look on the website, yeah. you can actually see the process of a lorry dumping the load and it going right through. And, and I've, seen, I've seen the reduction in the size of waste. Yeah. And I went, I, I thought to myself, how did they do that? Yeah. that somebody's m messing around with a, with a bit of video editing, but there's not. No, there's There's a vast not. reduction. In, uh, the 80%. way the waste, when it's cleaned up, when it comes out, there's a vast reduction, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, and uh, the best thing about it is the European Union says that um, their law says that something is not perceived to have been recovered or recycled unless you physically change it or chemically change it or change its characteristics. Well, there's nothing more uh, changed than an orange peel or an apple that goes in there or a cardboard box and it comes out as the fibre. And you can actually see the fibre dropping off the end of the conveyor at wow. the, on the video. And Incredible. that is a product 
that can be sold as, as heat logs, as pellets. And it's non-toxic? Non-toxic. There you go. It's totally biomass based. It's over 95% biomass, the actual fibre itself. And that's important when you want to make renewable energy. And that's the only kind of uh, renewable energy that will have support in the future. Because in the south they've already brought it in. If you put an incinerator in, they're going to tax you. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's called an incinerator tax down south. They haven't gone that far up here. But because... But they will do. <laughs> well, I think it's inevitable because yeah. burning is bad. Burning's bad, yeah. You know, that's... It shouldn't happen. No. And, and especially when you've got... You have the solution to do all of this. You don't need to burn nothing. You don't need to do anything. Mm. Give your rubbish into Deborah's plant. Let the, let the operatives... They'll churn it out. Yep. And what comes out? Non-toxic pellets non -toxic. that you can use in a boiler. Yep. Absolutely. So you couldn't get any better than that. And, and the other thing is as well, in, the, in Limerick where I had the plant, we were, and on that project, we were about showing that we could do the conversion, that the plant, the industrial process that we were applying to waste actually worked. And after we'd pr proved that, then I was able to take the, the pellet or the fibre itself. I sent it to Sweden for testing. Ooh. I sent it to England for testing, to the University of Nottingham for testing, to Limerick for testing, and to Scotland. Wow. And every one of the tests that was done proved that the fibre itself is, well, not to get technical or yeah. professor, eh? Um, it's a chain of sugars, right? Inside that, the fibre. That is binded. That's binded by sugars. There's a chain of sugars in there. And those sugars are what make bioethanol, which goes in petrol, petrol yep. biogas, and biodiesel. So if I wasn't burning it to create renewable energy, I can use any one of the other three methods. But it's never been done on a commercial scale with my fibre because my fibre's never been produced before. So what I want to do is put the plant up and put the research centre alongside for biogas, bioethanol, and biofuels. And that would allow us to develop the thing further rather than just make it into a pellet and put it in your wood burner yeah. or a log to get the maximum value out of it because the maximum value that you get out of it makes uh, the circle worthwhile. Indeed it does, yeah. yeah. I, know, I, I, I know exactly what you're saying. That makes a lot of sense again. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's, it's alternative fuels then, isn't it? Yeah. And clean fuels. Clean, absolutely clean, clean. fuel. This, this is unbelievable. I think we should go to Brussels. I think we should go to Stormont first. Brussels and then Stormont. That'll do. We'll do Brussels first we'll just, and then We'll land Stormont. up to Stormont and say, yes, we're just back from Brussels. <laughs> That'd be rattling them up there, wouldn't it? Well, I was thinking about one of those European grant applications, but uh, I, I do believe that Invest Northern Ireland and that the new 11 councils The new 11 councils, yes. I'm so looking forward oh. to working with the new 11 because that's actually 15 less than yeah. I would have had to work with Well, they're before. 15 less, but it's, they're bigger they're councils. They're super councils, you know. and that way they're able to take um, more <laughs> action. And more responsibility for, for, for the rubbish that they have to deal with. Yeah. Because it's, it's a big problem. Yeah. This is a very, very, very big problem. The amount of plastic bags that went to landfill and they've stuck on hedges and they've, you know, they don't break down or nope. anything. You know, there is plastic bags that do break down, but they take t 10 years or something yeah, to break down. Yeah, the biodegradable down. ones so, now do work. So you have the solution. Yes. This is unbelievable. I mean, it worked. The it thing works. is, it works. What do you see on my, on my website? I've seen it. Is the actual Limerick site and plant. The plant is still sitting there. I'm now currently trying to relocate it back to Northern Ireland yeah. to go full-scale commercial and to be able to provide yeah. this type of technology for Northern Ireland. Well, it's not the smallest thing in the world to move, Deborah. let's face it. I'm just going to move my plant from Limerick to Optin. No, it's not. <laughs> it's uh, a lot of work, I would say, involved in that. It's a major move it's now a major because, one. I mean, at the end of the day, you're t the two autoclaves, the main body of the plant, so to speak, I mean, they're 65 feet long, um, yeah. 20 feet in diameter, they weigh 65 tonnes and they have to be moved by special lorry. Well, I would um, imagine so. <laughs> do you know, whenever they were going into Limerick, I'll give you a laugh, somebody that stopped because they were only allowed to drive at night because of the size yeah. of the loads and they were... Um, That's right, yeah. But they pulled in outside Limerick and uh, this wee boy was out on his bicycle and the guy was sitting in the lorry with one of my autoclaves on the back. And viewers, it looks a bit like a milk bottle lying on its side made out of metal. Do you know, it's like a bit like a rocket. And uh, the guy knocked on the lorry driver's door and the lorry driver opened the window and he says, 
what's that you've on the back? And the lorry driver says, oh, it's a bit of kit I'm delivering to Limerick. He says, is, that, is them Americans putting them missiles out of Shannon again? <laughs> <laughs> he thought it was a missile going to Shannon. Oh, so, me. Uh, you know, must, so the, the, there must be some size. Like yeah. That's a big, big lump of machinery, isn't it? Yeah, but it takes but a big lump of machinery. Because to it can treat a lot of waste. A lorry load of waste in two hours. That's a treat it in two hours? Two hours, through the kit and done. Two hours every lorry load. Because I'm sure some of the some of the big lorry bin lorries, especially, they go out to the landfill. It probably takes them a half an hour to get out of the local mm. area to go to the landfill site, mm -hmm. and probably another 10, 15 minutes to dump all the stuff out and to get back. So you're talking maybe an hour. Mm -hmm. So you're going to cut an hour off travelling times for councils bin lorries, Alone. essentially. Yeah. So the knock-on effect of what you can produce, mm -hmm. it's it's. It's absolutely it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal in terms it's, it's of potential cost saving over the future because once you put one of these plants in, like an incinerator, you have to do a, a contract for 25 years with an incinerator. Well, here, looking at the last 25 years, Tony, what developments have there been that None. if we had only been able to put into an incinerator? I tell you. You know, so now we've got to be able to do it in a way that protects the public and the councils in terms of cost exposure, not just what the gate fee is. But what it costs to look after wherever you're putting it in the future. I've just thought of something there else. Now, you know, we're in the north of Ireland here. Yep. Now, there's now, there's currently, there's currently a big buzz about, about the bonfires in Belfast. Mm -hmm. Right? The loyalists are putting their bonfires up. Yep. What if you could produce pallets made out of your, your pallets, out of your fibre? Yeah. And let them t take them and... You can, have a big, you can have a big bonfire with no toxins in it. Mm, the That'd be a good one. We'd have to tell them to leave the tires at home, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the toxins <laughs> come from. That's where they come from. Yeah. So I was watching the, watching the news clip last night and it showed yeah. you what toxins were coming off. They cut a small bit of the tire off and yeah. they, they burnt it, you know. I did a lot of work with tires, you know, as well, because obviously you haven't been in the scrap metal business. Obviously, what you've, is, you've what seen What does a car come in with? Four tires. Four tires, <laughs> indeed, yeah. And that's changed so much since I first started working in the scrap industry. I mean, you could have done anything with the tires. Now they're a hazardous waste. So wow. it, even when you go back to change your tires in the car, did you never notice There's the charge The charge you know for dumping and your own take tires. The tire. Yeah, and they, so they, they are going to dump your tires. Yeah, you know? legally. That's yeah. what they have to do because yeah. they're, they're responsible. If yeah. they put a thousand tires out into the community, they have to show where they got a thousand back. True. So. You know, it's a different ball game we're playing in now, but what I'm talking about here is the stuff the ordinary householder has. Yeah. And do you see instead of having five bins out your back, or four bins in a box, or three bins in a box, or a separate one for composting and a separate yeah. one for this, if they put everything into one bin, I it's can going take to be it. sorted. It's going to get sorted. Isn't I it? can take the material exactly as it comes out in one bin. In now, one bin. The only reason I didn't emphasise this before was. I'm a great believer in education and the one thing our councils have done well is educate the public about recycling. So yes, we're washing out our, our, our bottles and we're washing and we're putting glass in one place. But did you ever notice the way not all councils are the same? Yeah, right enough, yeah. You know, in one place you're able to recycle a margarine tub. In another place you're not allowed to put it in. Yeah. In one place you're allowed to put a, a, a package uh, for, say, orange juice. But on another one, you're not. And it's different again in England. Exactly. It's different in, in, in different parts of England, it's different again. They were just publicising that on BBC this week about how different it was in England in different regions that weren't allowed to do it. And the very minister that is responsible for it said, oh, I can recycle my uh, margarine tubs and my yoghurt cartons where I live. And he had to come on an hour later and say, eh, 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 I'm awful sorry. Oh. My wife does the most of this, oh. like, and I'm awful sorry for getting it wrong. <laughs> but I can't. There isn't one way that can deal with a bin coming out of the back of a bin lorry. I have that solution. There you go. This is a big, this is massive. What you have is absolutely massive. Yeah. You have the technology. Yes. You proved it. You, have the, you had the working plant in Limerick. Yes. So I, I don't, you know, the councils should really get on to you big time yeah. because the EU are fining the council. They're fining the councils for more rubbish than they had last year. Mm -hmm. You have the solution. The actual you fines, have the solution. The fines in Northern Ireland, and this might astound your viewers. I warned in two thousand and five 
whenever I stepped down as chair of the Waste Board for Northern Ireland, I warned the then Minister of the Environment that Northern Ireland was going to be paying massive fines. Fines in excess of a million, two million pounds, <laughs> ten million pounds a year if they didn't get their act together. They still don't have their no. act together. And we have three regional groups that <clears> have spent <throat> millions in taxpayers' money going to see in, uh, incinerators in Stockholm and I've been to the incinerator in Stockholm it's an incinerator it's a great one but the difference is in Stockholm they've got district heating where they can use the hot water and the steam to heat houses here we haven't do you see if you put rubbish in an incinerator and burned it and just took the, the, the heat off to make electricity you've only got 22 percent efficiency so that's not recycling. No, no, you no. You wouldn't even recognise that if you only pulled 22% out of your bin. Uh, big time, yeah. You know what I mean? Of course. So they've <clears> got <throat> to get real. They've got <coughs> to engage with the private sector. I don't believe the councils have the wherewithal financially to make the commitments to put in a power plant and one of my autoclave systems to deal with 150,000 tonnes of waste is about 30 million. Now, that would generate enough electricity to feed at least four or five towns in Northern Ireland. Wow. Re four or five with, towns? With renewable energy. That's 10 megawatts an hour. My goodness. If you look at some of the small scale projects I have now, mine is a solution that would bring a product to the market that would allow us to satisfy our own needs in Northern Ireland and sell the idea to the rest of the world. We could be manufacturing parts of it. You could, yeah, you could even, you know, you could have your template for your machines. You yep. could take that out to anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the and world. And construct it out there. Yeah. And it makes perfect sense because you are the lady that, you, you started all this. Yes, I did. You started it. Yes, and I did. As I say, you, you, have, you had the working plant and all, Limerick. Mm -hmm. It works, it works, it works. Do you know the good thing, This though, is unbelievable. The good thing about it is, autoclaving was actually considered by one of the groups in Northern Ireland when they were looking for a solution. And it was the solution that they opted for, except they were going with a company that had no history of building autoclaves before. Oh. And I had mine in Limerick. And uh, the company that they went with, unfortunately, went to the wall and didn't, weren't able to work with them. But they know because they did the investigation. And autoclaving is named in our uh, best approved technologies oh. in Northern Ireland. So I'm not uh, preaching to people who don't know. They should know by now, and, and I am now coming very active in Northern Ireland to see if I can secure yeah. the right location and get this up and running, because it is a shame that we can't use the valuable university contacts, the research that we have here. Like, if we can do this here, you could sell it to anywhere. Northern Ireland's only about the size of... Well, it's not, not even as big as Birmingham. Not There's only all. a million and a half people here. L London's bigger than Northern Ireland. It is, surely. London. Yeah. It's far bigger than Northern Ireland. You know, so I, I believe that the application of a sustainable technology as a solution to non-hazardous waste this is, unreal. is the way to go in Northern Ireland. I think we have the technology. I think we've proven it. And I think the way to go now is to build one and let it shine a big and a light out to the rest of the world. I like your don't style. have to go down the incinerator route. Yeah. And, and poison in the air, yep. and, you know, because that's where all the poison goes. It goes up in there and then it comes lands and plants and everything else. Yeah. You know it, I know it. Um, you breathe it in as, you know, they're on about air quality. Yeah. You know, y you don't realise about air quality. The air out there could be stinking. Mm. Very dangerous, very bad for you. And you, you don't wouldn't know, even know. You don't, you don't realise, you don't taste it, you know. Well, simple. the thing about dioxins and fumars, <coughs> which is what you're talking about, yeah. uh, the actual emissions that come out of uh, an incinerator plant, those are a direct result of burning plastics and UPVCs. So you're putting chlorines, you're yes. putting these dangerous chemicals into what they call a clean-up plant, which is the back end of any incinerator, is a clean-up plant to take the stuff out that they don't allow them to emit to air. Yeah. What do they do with it whenever they take it out? I mean, never mind the stuff that gets out. All of that is hazardous waste. The very ash is hazardous waste. So you're creating a more hazardous product that you have to deal with simply by burning your waste. My goodness. Why do that this when is you've got the solution? Nuri Moore, District Council. I had some of you councillors in, in the studio here with me. Um, one in, one in is will, he will stick he will go along with uh, helping Andy Fraggers. Yes, so that's good. One in, 
one in. The rest won't until they find out how dangerous and all it is. Yeah. Anyway, Nuri Moore, this council. The money you guys waste on waste management, this lady has a solution. Get involved with her, get in touch with her. Yep. You never know. I'm telling you, this is very serious. I've seen all the videos. It's incredible mm. how the process works. It's incredible the reduction of waste that instead of putting it at the landfill at that, by the time your process is finished, it's that. Yep. And then, you, you know, you've got these pallets. You're in more council. I think you should get in touch with this lady, Deborah Boyd. And if, if any of the councillors want to get out through my Facebook page or Twitter, get on to me. I'll give you all the details for Deborah. No problem. I'd be happy you know, to talk. I would like to see the council. You know, you're looking for a site. Yes. For for your your new your new autoclave yep. business, and I don't know nearly more councils that are after getting the, they're now a super council. Get involved. This lady could have the answer. She has the answer. She's not. It's not she could have. This lady has the answer. She's done it before. She's proved it. You've you've sent all the samples of the pallets away to universities. Mm -hmm. They've come back clear. Absolutely. I have all the results there and I sent them as well when I was doing it <coughs> because I'm a great believer in go straight to the horse's mouth whenever you want to get something right. Oh yeah. And I contacted the energy companies in the UK and they use a company called Dyson Babcock in Scotland who are a reputable independent laboratory. And I sent our stuff off to them and they came back and they have never, wow. ever seen. And Nottingham University are currently involved with our engineer in the UK in a pilot project where they're going to do a, do a university-based research project. But I'm about getting the technology out there and working yeah. because, you know, with the greatest will in the world, you can do all the research in the world, but if you're not providing a solution to a problem, then all you're doing is getting research papers. Oh, and yeah, yeah, whilst yeah. I'm a visiting professor, I am very much about employment. I'm about protecting the environment. Because you are very passionate about the environment, I have to I say. I am passionate and, about and it. You're very passionate about it. And I like passionate people. And, mm -hmm. and so is uh, Diane Jessie Miller. Very passionate. She does not like this fracking. And rightly so. There are fracking parts of England where she has yes. lived and where her friends live. And it's, it is terrible. Things are going wrong. The great thing about it, though, is never underestimate the power of people. There's yes, There's social indeed. media, um, independent radio stations, independent uh, uh, places like Heat Destination Banter where you're able to come on and you know, uh, give a big razor out there to everybody. That's it, give them a razor. You razor know. and tell them what's out there because yeah. people are kept in the dark. Yeah. And if they don't know, they can't support or oppose anything. And at the minute people are so afraid of, like call incinerators, paralysis plants, gasification oh. plants. Oh, is this the new the terminology? It, so All it basically <laughs> means is, paralysis means it's done in a semi-oxygen uh, or a non-oxygen environment. That means inside there, there's no oxygen in the burning chamber, but everything else is the same. And the temperature, once it goes above 320 degrees C, it's an incinerator no matter what you call it. That's exactly what it is. I'm at 160 degrees. Half the temperature. That's unbelievable. So that's half the energy used. You're creating energy, you're creating jobs, and you're creating a product that can be used for creating more energy. Absolutely. Out of complete and utter rubbish. rubbish. Waste that we throw into the bin. And as I say, the councils, these are the ones, they, it's, it's Europe that are finding the councils here in Ireland. Yep. You have a solution now, guys. This is the solution. This lady here, Deborah Boyd, has the solution. So Newry Morn Council, or Newry Morn and Down Council, because they're a big super council now. Absolutely, that's right. I'm You're now you. part of Down, or all one big council. Yeah. I've, got, I've got something called ABC. Oh. <laughs> uh, Armagh, Bam, Bam Bridge, Bridge and Craig, Craig Alvin. Alvin. <laughs> <laughs> I live in Rich Hill myself, so yeah. I'll say. Oh, uh, no, you you know. Know. Rich Hill. We, Remember we, Rich Hill? we we replaced Orma with Rich Hill. Rich Hill. <laughs> That's right. But Deborah, this this, this like, I don't know why this should be out there big time. Yeah. But I, I was going to make a suggestion. Can you make a small plant for the likes of, say, Bellinis or you know? Can is there is there because the, these guys take a lot of cardboard boxes in. Yeah. Especially for food and, and drinks and that yeah. there. And then they're binding all this cardboard. They're compacting it. They're binding it up. And then somebody has to come and take all that away. Yeah. Can you do small? Is it possible to do s small personal plants for personal like establishments? That's what the research and development is about: is to whether or not you can downscale it in a size and in a way that is appropriate. One of the things about the plant I built was my 
biggest priority, A, was getting the autoclaves to do what they were supposed to do. But the funny thing I found when I went to Limerick, the drinking water in Limerick, the public drinking water, was not of a clean enough standard to go into my boilers. What? So I had to put a water treatment plant up front. So I had to clean the water going in. Before it even goes in? Before it goes in to make the steam. Before the steam goes into the Holton tank and before the steam is introduced to the boilers or to the autoclaves. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is right? unreal, yeah. So I had to clean the water. And I thought to myself, hang on a minute, there's steam coming back out and that's energy. So when we designed the plant in Limerick, we built it so that whenever we take the steam out, if it's in the right sequence that the second one's coming on, we offload the steam in there so we reuse it. Right. If it's not in sequence and it's not ready to go on to a cycle, we send it through, we recycle the steam, put it back into the water treatment plant and reuse the water. That's smart. So we built in the recycling of the water and steam from the plant. We built in an odour control system that controls any of the other um, smells that might go over. And um, we had a, a mechanical separation plant that did, took the fibre out first and then you started extracting the metals, the aluminium, the steel, etc. Using and traditional yeah. methods, you know. Yes. And um, as I say, it's, it's been, what, six, seven years of my life in Limerick and, and beyond. Um, and there's been interest from all over the world. The problem I have now is I need a plant up and running in order to generate all those sales. And those sales would all be generated out of Northern Ireland if the plant was here. There you go. I'm telling you, so friends out there, uh, should it be Newry Moore Council, should it be ABC, Rich Hill Council, do you like that there? Aye, well, Rich I'll have to get a new council. Uh, <laughs> seriously, you know, and the, the, the guys up in Stormont, you know, this lady has a solution. Yep. to a massive problem here in this small little country of ours. Yep. Get in touch, get out there, get, you know, go, you, you are a hard worker, I have to say, and you, you're yeah. a driver, you, you push yourself. Yep. Uh, for instance, manager of a rock band, that's only just for the crack, that's only <laughs> just, that's only, we'll say, uh, what uh, I'll, I'll scale down my, my, uh, my waste management <laughs> operation. <laughs> I was afraid, Nick, I better get the band on the go then. <laughs> well, you're you're some cookie, you're some cookie. I've like had some different uh, uh, sort of involvements and things over the yeah. years. I, I'm, I've been, well, I'm now called an employment judge, but I've been a member of the Industrial and Fair Employment Tribunals from 1989, so I sit there uh, several times a year to, to do cases for where employers or employees have a dispute. So. I'm a uh, part-time employment judge. I'm uh, involved very much with um, healing. Uh, I've trained uh, to level one in Reiki Ooh. healing. Um, and again, because of, of uh, my connections with the Ingrams and particularly with Jackie, yeah. um, I'm planning to take that out to a further level because I believe very much in holistic healing and in yoga and in being able to get yourself de-stressed in a world that throws stress at you hand over fist. <laughs> see, I haven't got there yet. I'm still mad as a bucket of weasels. Well, you see, he you just know, keep I let going. the stress go, ah, you, go crack you, you take know. her out. But I'm, I'm serious about this. You're, 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 you are something special, right? And, Thank you. And um, it's great to meet people like yourself, you know, because the drive, the passion that you have, but you have this product. The thing is, you've got this product. Mm -hmm. You have a product. Yes. And this product needs to be activated, it needs to be constructed by some of the councils here in this country. Well, you see, the it problem is, I don't think they have the ability to raise the money to do it. I think a private sector company has got to come in and offer them the solution. And what I'm saying now is that with the new super councils coming in, and with the Department of Environment where they are at the moment, I mean, Belfast City Council have just set aside a big chunk of the old landfill site down there totally for this type of project. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, they've just secured an area down there and I'll be talking to Belfast City Council shortly because it is one of the areas that is already designated for this type of thing. Right. So, um, there's that. Uh, I have an inkling towards the old maze site because every time I drive down that road and I know there's been all kinds of controversy yeah. over the conflict resolution centre and everything else, but I believe if we could put some kind of technology of this nature that would be the driver and the power source 
for anything, be it industrial housing or whatever else ends up there, I have this dream that one day we may see a beacon of light. And it was originally going to be part of the Conflict Resolution Centre. But I actually believe that my technology and uh, the right investment on that site could create a power generating plant which could permanently have a beam of renewable energy shining to the future and not to the past on that site. Yeah. And that's one site that I feel passionately about myself. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at a number of other locations including west of the Ban. Um, and a few plants in Northern Ireland would solve our problem and we could probably make a lot of money solving the Republic of Ireland's problem as well. And everybody else exactly. around the planet. Around exactly. the planet. Because they're all burning the household waste. Yeah. They're dumping it in the bin. We're all doing it. There's no, yeah. no point saying anything else. But you have the solution. This is it, friends. This lady has the solution. The professor has... Professor Boyd has the solution. <laughs> Get, I'm telling you, the council's get involved with this lady quick because I've seen her operation on yeah. the internet. I've watched it. I was enthralled by it. I yeah. was thinking, is that all you have to do? Re you know, <laughs> it's not just that simple. Don't get me wrong. No. It's, it's, but it's, it's so much better than landfill. It's yeah. so much better than, you know, uh, incinerating it. There's no historic... It's, uh, it's just uh, unbelievable. ...leavings behind that you have to deal with. You know, that's the great thing about it. Yeah. When you put it in the front door and it comes out the back door as a product and it goes for energy or for biofuel, you never see it again. It's an energy that's been released again. It's gone, And yeah. this whole planet is about energy. Everything that goes on is about energy. And it's how we, and the vibrations and the fake frequencies that we put out... Indeed, indeed. ...that change this planet. And that's why I believe that this technology and the way it, it can be applied, not only for the jobs that it creates and, and the solutions that it provides, but also for the fact that it is simple, or it appears simple. Yeah. I know a number of other companies have tried to do it and ended up with tragedies, both in terms of loss of life and have ended up with uh, projects that went to the wall, three of them in England, that wow. I watched. And the reason ours didn't was because we had the right technology, we had the right control process, and, you've and all we the experience. made the right investment. We didn't shortchange yeah. it. And you've all, you have all the years of experience at the end of the day, Deborah. Absolutely. You have the experience. You, know, you can't gain experience by looking at a, a computer screen or a keyboard. No. Right? You know that and I know that. Yeah. You've, you're a hands-on person. You have been for years. Very you went to Limerick so. for years. Then you double it and then back here. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's get this. Let's get this RE three group going. Let's get it up there. Let's get all the rubbish in, treat it, and see. Let let the world come to Northern Ireland and and see how Deborah Boyd has created this monster. Yeah. But it's a good monster it for the future. It is a good monster, Razor. It future. is a good monster, and that's one of the things. I mean, it doesn't take. Um, it doesn't take an, a highly educated person to understand what we do. If you actually watch it on the video. You can see it, it's as simple as you close the door, it does its thing, you open the door and it starts to fall out. And I'm sure when you watched the video of what was falling out, you were thinking, uh, I was thinking oh, where's the where's rest the of rubbish? it? <laughs> where's the rubbish? I, I was from? thinking Deborah pushed a wee button uh, there when we weren't looking. It went, <laughs> went <laughs> out the back of it. No, but it is, it's, it shock, is it's the reduction it's in the waste. It's magical to look at. I from, mean, from a huge, and then it comes out. Like that? 20% of the volume. <laughs> I mean, you lost 80% of the volume. And then the, the weight is more or less the same. We extract some additional water out of it because we're able to extract moisture from it. That's and then, incredible, isn't it? Yeah. It's un unbelievable. It's not unbelievable. It's true, friends. And it's live. And it's in the studio with me today. Deborah Boyd, you are something special. <laughs> Councillors, take note. I'm telling you, MLAs, take note. This lady is the future. She is the future for saving the council's millions and millions every year. Thank you very much. So, Deborah, a big, a big warm welcome again to see you in the studio. It's great to be in. And uh, it's lovely to have you in because you're 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 an interesting lady to talk to. You're you know you're you're a buzz, you know. But as I say, friends. You'll probably have a, a bit of managing to do with the rock band at the weekend, will you, or something? Yes, I'm yes. actually off at the weekend with the guys again. They're playing, <laughs> and uh, it's my birthday the following weekend, so we're oh. having we're having the guys are playing at my birthday party. Actually, oh, br <laughs> uh, here that'll be that'll be a brilliant night. Yeah, it'll be great night. So crack. a pre-birthday wish to you, right here, Thank right you now. Very much indeed. So I hope you. Uh, I I definitely found that very interesting. I have to say, yeah. and uh, I want to wish you well, and I think you will get your plant up and running and yeah. I hope you get it up and running soon by the help of the councils and everybody else because 
it's an environmental, it, you're, you're going to sort out the environment. Yeah. You know, it's going to be better for us all at the end of the day. Has to be. So, from me and Deborah Boyd, RE3 Group, check it out, re3group.com. Check this out, friends. It's well worth checking out. It'll take you a while to check it out, but have a look at it and see what this wonderful lady can do. <laughs> so, from me and Deborah, friends, we're out of here. Razor. Razor.